Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really great and ready for today's video. Now, Lord Voldemort has accomplished a lot. You could say that he's achieved more than the average wizard. Okay, maybe that's an understatement. The man took magic to a whole different level. It was magic on a completely different scale. And it's not naive to assume that nobody will ever reach those heights again. However, before he became known solely as Lord Voldemort, the Dark Lord went by his original name of Tom Riddle. And let me tell you, Tom was also able to achieve something that nobody else before him had even come close to. Now I'm not talking about any type of spells or any type of magic. I'm talking about how Tom Riddle got his hands on the lost diadem of Ravenclaw. What did he do, what did he say, in order to convince Helena Ravenclaw to tell him the location of the headpiece? Let's take a look in today's video. So, how did Tom Riddle manage to do something that possibly hundreds before him failed to do? Convincing the Grey Lady, Helena Ravenclaw, to reveal the diadem's location. Well, in order to discover that, we have to take a look at both characters and how they operate. So let's start with Helena. Now, Helena Ravenclaw was not a nice person. She wasn't. She was selfish, self-centered, and extremely jealous of her mother's fame, power, and status. She hated the expectations placed upon her because of it. It also caused her to genuinely resent Rowena and the relationship between the two was strained from very early on. As many if not all of us know, the Diadem of Ravenclaw is famous for allowing the wearer to experience a huge increase in wisdom and wit. The Diadem is famous all over the wizarding world and it's been highly coveted for centuries. Trouble is, it's missing. Cue Helena Ravenclaw. Wanting to escape her mother and the suffocating atmosphere in Britain, Helena stole the diadem and fled to Albania where she resided for a number of years. Now, Rowena, although heartbroken, did not pursue her daughter, despite her taking the diadem with her. She just wanted Helena to be happy. Helena, on the other hand, didn't care too much for her mother or her well-being. This was evidently clear when Rowena's health failed several years later. Her dying wish was to see her daughter one final time before she passed. The Bloody Baron was sent to Albania to track Helena down and bring her back to Scotland. Shockingly, despite knowing her mother was about to die, she outright refused to return. Now the Baron, who was actually in love with her, was so outraged at her awful behaviour, he killed her in a moment of rage and shortly took his own life afterwards after experiencing an overwhelming level of guilt. So this is Helena's story and hopefully you guys have an idea of what kind of person she is what her personality is like, and actually, I want you to do something for me right now, only if you have the time. I want you to pause the video and write down how you would convince Helena to tell you where the diadem is from the information you know about her now. Well, if the predicted 1% of you actually did what I've suggested, you would have done something similar or maybe exactly what Tom Riddle did in order to extract the information he wanted. Tom analysed her character. He knew everything there was to know about the Grey Lady before he ever even encountered her. It was what he did. It was why he was so good. Tom had used this manipulative technique with many of his teachers previously, all of which brought him good fortune. Helena Ravenclaw was no different. Tom would have known her story anyway from the tales told amongst the students. Tales that told of the diadem's power, of it being lost for centuries, and Helena was the last one to have seen the headpiece before its disappearance. He knew exactly how to approach her, exactly how to play to her emotions. She felt a lot of anger and resentment towards her mother, remember that, and that's what Riddle is going to exploit by appearing relatable to her, by being understanding to what Helena went through. Tom would highlight the pressures he felt being a model student, how being expected to be great is a burden more than encouraging. 
By feigning vulnerability, Helena would feel like she had someone she could truly talk to. For example, she hated the name of the Grey Lady, she never answered to it and of course Riddle would know that. He'd ask her why she disliked the name so much, he'd appear as if he wanted to know more and agree completely with her about how wrong it was for the students to give her such a name. It was all about gaining her trust, slowly gaining her trust. He wouldn't dare bring up the diadem or mention that he was seeking it at any point during the first several encounters. It was a slow paced plan. As the two became close, or at least that's what Helena believed, Tom would play to the similarities between the two without making it known that he already knew Helena's opinion on her mother, so he'd mention his own first. He'd talk to Helena about how he despised his mother's weakness, how he was embarrassed that she just gave up on life, and him, in order to unlock his new friend's trust. Now, it probably wouldn't be the most enjoyable of occasions for Riddle, having to have conversations he didn't want to have in order to hopefully extract the information he wanted from the ghost of Ravenclaw Tower. Eventually, Helena would confide in him about her own struggles with her mother, and the subject of the diadem would be brought up. After all, it was Rowena's most notable relic, still famous after all these years. The diadem was a representation of her mother's magical greatness, something that she felt had always and would always overshadow her. This was an object that, as long as it still existed, would be a constant reminder to Helena that she could never live up to her mother's example. Tom, being as clever and witted as he was, would correctly assume this which would lead him to suggesting that he'd destroy it if he had the chance. And if you think of the Tom Riddle from the books, and even the attitude of how he was portrayed in the movies, I can imagine him saying something along the lines of, it's been lost for centuries though, everyone thinks you know its location, but if that were true, I already feel you'd have sought upon having it destroyed. Maybe it's best it remains hidden, because bringing the diadem back into the spotlight would again heighten your mother's fame even more. I myself would destroy it given the opportunity. Can you imagine him saying something like that though? I really can. So cunning, so manipulative. Tom Riddle to a T. This would draw out Helena's admission that she does indeed know the location of the diadem and would he truly destroy it on her behalf. It's right at this point you'd probably think, perfect, he's in. No, not for Tom. He'd lightly argue that he's not the person for such a task, wanting Helena to desperately try to convince him otherwise, just to feed his ego an arrogant nature. Only then would he accept. Reluctantly, and I use the term reluctantly in air quotes, Riddle would travel to Albania, retrieve the diadem, and instead of destroying it, would use the headpiece as his next horcrux, forever preserving it through dark magic. He'd done everything he said he wouldn't do. So everyone, with that being said, that's how I believe it went down between Tom Riddle and the Grey Lady, Helena Ravenclaw. Tom used emotional manipulation to get the diadem, and he'd done it very well. Tom also done something really simple that many others didn't, that many others didn't even try. He was nice to her. He was friendly. Now, my question for you today is this. Is there anything else you believe, anything else you think Tom Riddle did in order to get the diadem? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching again, and remember to please be happy and please be kind to one another. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. 
Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.